When you think of a burger, what you need is a great sauce. And a light, smoky barbecue goes hand in glove with a great burger. Start by finely chopping one onion and three cloves of garlic. Nice hot pan, tablespoon of olive oil, onions and garlic into the pan. A nice seasoning, salt and pepper. Now, the secret of a good barbecue sauce is that really important caramelization to begin with. A nice tablespoon of brown sugar. It darkens the onions, but it really starts to sort of give that nice syrupy body to the sauce. We'll put a little bit of heat in there now. A nice teaspoon of smoked paprika. That's the important part of working with spices. You've got to cook them out and almost sort of burn off that rawness, especially with the smoked paprika. That's exactly where I want it to go. Onions and garlic, beautifully caramelized. Slide the vinegar in. Reduce that down. Now, I've got a fantastic smoky base. To complete the sauce, I'm making my life really easy and adding pre-made Worcester sauce and tomato ketchup. Cook that out for two to three minutes. Now, depending on how thick you like the barbecue sauce, that determines how long you cook it out for. I don't want it to be too runny, but I don't want it to be too thick either. That's the consistency we're looking for. Mm. Lovely. Turn down the gas. Touch of seasoning. Now, take that out. It's the kind of sauce that I like to have sort of bottled up in the fridge. It's great for sandwiches, but goes brilliantly well with these sliders. Homemade, smoky barbecue sauce. Get the pan a little wipe. Now, start the mix for the sliders. To give my mix a really interesting flavor and texture, I'm going to be using unsmoked back bacon. I travel all over the world and I spent a lot of time in the States, they know how to make a great slider. Pork sliders, beef sliders, chicken sliders. And it's almost like a way of having a burger, but on a much smaller, miniature level. A little teaspoon of olive oil. I want that bacon to get really nice and crispy. Bacon in. This just gives it a really nice sort of chunky, delicious mix. I want texture and pork is Perfect for a slider. And chop your shallot. Shallots are a lot sweeter than your normal white onion. Fine, fine, fine. And in. Now that bacon's getting really nice and crispy, I want a bit of heat in there. Put a little teaspoon of smoked paprika in there. And when you see these sliders in the States, for one portion, there's like four or five of them, little mini one-biters. Incredible. Now, take your pork, just open it up, and give that a really nice seasoning. So important. You can't season a slider after you've cooked it. It's impossible. So season it nicely. Bacon. Now, that's nice and crispy. Just take a little touch kitchen roll and just drain that off there. Nice. Pat that nice and dry. I want all that nice sort of crispiness in there. Beautiful. Mix all that in. Take a nice ball and sort of roll it. Size of a golf ball. Get it nice and round first, and then three fingers. Just pat that down. Don't flatten them too thin, otherwise they overcook and they go sort of dry. Because sliders are bite-sized burgers designed to go in small buns, you don't want to make them too big. Good. Get the pan nice and hot. A tablespoon of olive oil. When a slider is literally that thick, about an inch thick, we're going to take two and a half to three minutes each side. In. Turn them over. Lovely. Once you've turned them, tilt the pan and just spoon all that juice back into them. Even my mouth's watering now. It's very easy to dry the pork out. So just feeling it now with your fingers is nice and firm. There's a little touch of springiness in the center. I'm happy with those. 
Add your cheese now so it gets nicely melted. I'm using wedges of smoked cheddar. And it adds that nice sort of soury, smoky creaminess to the slider. Finally, shred a baby gem lettuce. And just take those buns, and make sure they're sliced nice and evenly. Take your lettuce. Be quite generous with the lettuce. Just a nice thin slice of tomato. Take your burgers. You see that cheese? Beautifully melted. Your barbecue sauce. Mm. Place the top on. And that is my version of a slider that is small, dynamic, but packed full of flavour. I'll take that over a hamburger any day. First off, get that pan really nice and hot. These are sirloin steaks. Sear it in the pan with all that fat on. It'll add flavour. Salt and pepper. A couple of tablespoons of olive oil in. Pan. Nice and hot. Hold up the steak. And lay it in. Always lay away. Give the pan a little shake and it stops the steak from sticking. We're looking for colour. And if it sticks, it's going to burn. While the steaks are cooking, I can go on with my super quick marinade. Now, two tablespoons of miso paste. That's a fermented soybean. That gives a really nice sort of rich, Sweetness. A tablespoon of sugar. A couple of tablespoons. Rice wine. That gives it a really nice vinegary kick. A couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Salt and pepper. I'm looking for a nice sort of thick, rich marinade. Marinade done. It's time to turn the steaks. Tilt the pan. And to give the steaks a little base. All we're doing every time is just adding more and more flavour. Take your tongs and sort of lift the steak on its back and really melt all that fat down. Off with the gas. Take them out. Just take your knife. See all that fat there? Just slice that off. I don't want any of that. Now, in the marinade. Beautiful. Tacos are one of Mexico's most popular street foods. They can be made from beef, pork, chicken or fish and are loaded up with amazing sauces and spices. Now I want something sort of pickly. Cabbage. These are um, Chinese cabbages. Slice it in half. And look at it. Really crisp and really tasty. We're going to slice that into quarters and then just shred it and take your time. Think of cabbage here and you think of sort of braised, overcooked cabbage. Nothing worse. But in a taco, you want freshness, a little season of chilli flakes. They sort of discreetly give it a little bit of heat, a little touch of rice wine vinegar. If you haven't got that, fresh lemon juice. Small drop of toasted sesame seed oil. Give that a really good mix. Now I need something to sort of bring it together. We take some wasabi paste. Very hot, very spicy. A sort of thumbnail size. I'm going to mix that with a couple of tablespoons of mayonnaise. You give that a really good mix. These are basic corn tortilla. The trick is to sort of colour them and then shape them, actually place it on the gas ring. Use some tongs so as not to burn yourself. You can also toast your tacos in a frying pan. From there, I'm just going to place it on the rolling pin. Literally 30 seconds as it cools down. The great thing about serving tacos is people can fill them themselves just the way they want them. Cabbage. Just squeeze out wet marinade. Make a nice, rustic little mountain. Mayonnaise on. 
Wait, do you see how soft and delicious and almost sort of melting in the mouth texture we've got from this amazing sirloin? So we've got that really nice sear around the outside. It's just nice and pink in the middle. Start off with my crispy shell. Back of the spoon with the wasabi mayonnaise inside the taco. And just sprinkle that delicious pickled cabbage. And then just start lining my taco with three or four slices. Touch more of my spicy mayo. And that is how I'd make the perfect taco. Just open up and drain the tuna into a sieve. Just slightly flake that. Don't press it too hard, otherwise you'll dry out the tuna. Now, these are water chestnuts. Just slice them nice and thin. You can buy them anywhere, any supermarket. Chestnuts in. Fresh ginger. Get rid of that rough skin on the outside. By grating the ginger, you get to get all that really nice sort of juice in. Take your spring onions and just slice on an angle. I like the texture of the water chestnut with a spring onion. A touch of fresh coriander. Lovely. Next, remove the seeds from a chilli to reduce its heat without losing any flavour and finely chop. Chilies in. Kaffir lime leaves. Roll them up nice and tight. Run your knife down the centre once and just chop. And that makes the fish cake nice and fragrant. Touch of salt, touch of pepper. Fish sauce. Just lightly season the tuna to bind all those wonderful ingredients. Two whole eggs. And give that a nice little whisk. And then add your eggs. Get your hands in there and start mixing. Mm. Get the mixture, roll it from hand to hand with the palm, pat them down nicely. To cook, add a little ground nut oil to a hot pan. Like the face of a clock, we're gonna go from 12 all the way around. First one in. These fish cakes only take a few minutes to cook, so keeping track of the order they go in the pan means you know which one to turn first. Give the pan a nice, gentle little shake. Make sure that nothing's sticking to the bottom. Spatula, two fingers on top, turn them over. Beautiful. That crackling noise is something you always want because the tuna's already cooked, so we just lightly frying them to get the nice crisp outside and gently take them out. They smell incredible. Let them sit there. We're going to make a really nice, delicious, simple dipping sauce. Start off a little pinch of sugar. Fish sauce, two tablespoons. That gives it the saltiness. One tablespoon of rice wine vinegar and some fresh lime juice. Squeeze all that lime in there. Your fresh coriander, lots of coriander, and in. Give that a little mix. And then you have the most amazing spicy tuna fish cakes. Who would have thought something as delicious as that can come out of a can? A simple supper in minutes that's so mouth-wateringly easy and delicious, you're guaranteed to cook it again and again.